Hi, my name is Eric Sorensen. I teach at uh, McMaster University uh, in Hamilton. And uh, uh, when the university announced uh, this summer that uh, all of the fall term was going to be uh, online, I decided that I had to find a solution that was working much better for online teaching than compared to what I've been uh, using up till uh, then. Uh, and that's when I found the Lightboard. And I've been using the uh, Lightboard for teaching the entire fall semester. And I think it's safe to say that uh, it saved the semester for me and also for my students. Um, it's really been a pleasure to, to use. And so let me just tell you uh, two really obvious things that you'll immediately notice uh, when you start using the Blackboard. And the first thing is that uh, the audience is on the other side of the Blackboard. So when I write uh, something uh, like this, um, then uh, uh, I don't have to turn around. In a regular setting, uh, I would be uh, turning around trying to engage the audience behind me. But now the audience is on the other side of the uh, uh, light board. And I can just continue uh, uh, writing and I can continue speaking without constantly uh, turning around. So that's uh, one thing um, uh, that's really pleasant. It's much better than a, um, a, a regular setting. The other thing is that I would usually be writing uh, huge letters, uh, expressions like this. Um, so the students in the back of the auditorium would be able to see it. Uh, when you're using the light board, uh, then that's of no concern. I can write uh, intricate little uh, expressions like this, um, almost uh, as I would be writing on a piece of paper, and uh, uh, the students should still be able to, uh, to see it. Um, uh, so I was teaching uh, quantum mechanics uh, this fall, and it turns out there's a lot of uh, mathematical symbols and there's a lot of indices, and in that case, uh, being able to uh, uh, write uh, small expressions and integrate uh, uh, formulas like this actually is a, is a real uh, bonus. Um, uh, the other thing is I usually teach courses that involve computer programs, and I need to be able to show them, and uh, um, uh, the students need to be able to read them. And so for that, the, it turned out that uh, the resolution here that uh, that was important for me. I, I wanted to be able to uh, uh, broadcast in HD, and I wanted the students to be able to see that in HD. And uh, when I looked for a web camera, then of course uh, I couldn't find one. Um, but uh, I finally find, managed to find one, uh, which was a Logitech Brio. It's one of the uh, sort of more expensive web cameras that you can find. But it can do uh, 4K, which is uh, absolutely uh, not necessary for, for teaching. But it's a pretty good uh, HD camera. Um, and then all I needed was uh, to be able to get Zoom to uh, broadcast in HD. I originally wanted to record from Zoom, but uh, it turns out that controlling the format for uh, recording from Zoom, I, I was just never able to uh, figure out how to, to do that. Uh, so I uh, ended, uh, ended up uh, um, uh, playing around with that. Uh, and I finally found out that there's a, a, a toggle in uh, um, there's a toggle in Zoom uh, for uh, HD, um, and you need to uh, switch that on. Um, it used to be that uh, you needed a license for Zoom for that to be uh, present. Uh, that might have changed by now, uh, but um, I've been using uh, HD. Uh, for the entire fall semester, and uh, it has never been a problem for the students uh, or for myself. Uh, usually there might be some bandwidth issues, but uh, I haven't seen any. So that's been working uh, wonderfully uh, fine. Um, but let me tell you a little bit more about the setup. Uh, first of all, uh, I exclusively use uh, Macintosh uh, computers. Um, uh, so um, OBS uh, installs wonderfully on those systems. Everything works fine. Um, I, um, I wanted uh, something a little bit simpler. Uh, so I ended up going with uh, Logitech Capture, which is just a little bit, uh, little piece of software that's um, distributed uh, by Logitech for their project products. Uh, I don't think it'll work if you happen to have a web camera from another vendor, uh, but um, they probably block that. Um, but then again, almost all web cameras are from Logitech anyway. Um, so uh, it just has uh, two sources that you can play around with. And so uh, the uh, uh, I can just uh, switch over here and show uh, another window. I can split them uh, and I can move uh, myself around here. 
I can uh, resize this one if I wanted to. Um, and uh, there are sort of a couple of uh, splittings here that you can use. Um, but uh, that's all controlled just by some push buttons in the software. And uh, what I like about it is that uh, uh, I find it very easy to do while I'm lecturing and while I'm doing something else. Uh, I, I'm not distracted by tons of menus. Um, um, and obviously, uh, this also allows you to control the uh, uh, um, control the uh, autofocus, which you ne absolutely need to uh, switch off, and also the uh, uh, brightness uh, and uh, the the other controls that that you need to to have a good uh, black uh, background. For whatever reason, uh, Microsoft does not want you to uh, uh, control the uh, exposure. Um, Maybe they want you to do that if you have a Windows system, but they certainly don't want you to do that if you have a um, uh, have an Apple computer. Um, and that means that it's hard to get the background here to be completely black. Um, and it took me the entire fall term to figure out that uh, uh, Logitech actually uh, distributes another little piece of software. I tried maybe 10 different uh, camera settings apps. Uh, and they never worked. Um, but they have... Uh, a gaming hub which is called LG Hub and it happens that for the Brio camera that I have um, it's one of the devices that this one can control and lo and behold that actually has a nice exposure control in there so thanks uh, Logitech for that uh, and uh, with that in hand then uh, I can get uh, a really good uh, quality and I can broadcast in uh, HD um, so I record from uh, Logitech uh, Capture, um, and the only downside to that is that since it's in full HD, it actually gives me some really uh, huge files, um, and a uh, uh, typical lecture would be 7-8 gigabytes, um, and then I, I have to uh, uh, somehow compress that because 7-8 gigabytes, you can't uh, upload it and uh, you can't uh, work with it. Um, so I found a little piece of uh, software that's called Handbrake, which is uh, free. And uh, so once I'm done with the lecture, then I just uh, run it through that and it um, uh, sort of uh, compresses everything. So I get manageable files for um, uh, working with that. Um, so two more things here. Um, uh, since I'm not recording from Zoom, but I'm recording from... Uh, Logitech Capture, I was worried that uh, uh, audience input, if students are asking questions, that uh, uh, that would not be sent from Zoom over to uh, Logitech Capture. Um, uh, when the virtual camera uh, that's being set up by Logitech Capture uh, is in place, uh, it turns out that uh, the audio is actually transferred between the two programs something that's called uh, virtual audio cables. Um, and so when I'm recording, I get also all the audio comments from uh, uh, the students uh, on the uh, uh, audio for the video. Uh, but then uh, I decided that uh, it would be useful to have a little earpiece here. So if the students are ask, asking questions, um, it doesn't come out of the speaker from the computer and then uh, a feedback into the microphone which I have over here on the, the side uh, but instead they go straight into my little uh, earpiece here and that has been uh, working uh, wonderfully well and uh, so the uh, only other thing here is that uh, uh, I usually start my lectures uh, about sort of two to three maybe five minutes early so the students can drift in and then uh, I may still be making coffee and so for that purpose, so the students just don't stare at a blank uh, screen, then uh, I usually place a little object. So uh, I have my uh, mascot here, uh, and uh, whenever the students log in, that's what they see, and uh, that's it.